This is Cultured Unmasked, uh, coming out of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. We are not in Cleveland this time around, but you can still check out Blank Canvas at 2174 Leeds Roads in Cleveland Heights, Ohio. Um, again, they got dope art there. If you want to pick up some dope art or see some local artists, they got game nights, plenty of things going on there. Um, and I'm here with Newman. Uh, the, yeah. <laughs> you the spot. Yeah, man. Uh, you can find me on Instagram at Chris Newman. Chris Newman 216. Uh, again, at Instagram, um, I am an artist. I like to focus on uh, art, painters. Um, I have a book coming out hopefully in November, looking, um, working on another project with my brother um, on a collective of horror stories. Also, um, hope to have a clothing line come out as well here and, um, you know, within the next year. So keep an eye out on that. Again, Chris Newman on 2 6 on Instagram. Look for me. Ray? Hey, what's going on, everybody? My name is Ray My Youngblood, a.k.a. Ray's Arts. I'm a digital freelance illustrator, and you can find my artwork on Instagram at Ray's Arts, R-A-I-Z-A-R-T-S. I am the creator of Comic Book Slide Angle, which should be getting a June release. And again, this is Madison Hawthorne from Golden Street Publishing. You can find us on Facebook and Instagram at Golden Street Publishing. It's the same for both. On YouTube, it's Golden Tree TV. Again, that's Golden Tree TV on YouTube, and you can catch this podcast on our YouTube channel. Um, you can also catch it on Podbean, and it's soon to be coming to Apple, Spotify, and Google Play. So you can look up Cultured Unmasked as well there. Um, I guess we'll get right into it. I know coming up in May, um, the big thing everybody's looking forward to is um, Black Widow. Um, you guys looking forward to that? Absolutely. Sure. Can't, wait. Can't wait. How do you think it's going to be um, with them, you know, kind of killing her off in the, in the last one? And now they're doing like eventually like the a bit of a flashback or the origins or something like that um, with her. Um, while while she was still in Russia and things like that. Um, I mean, the, the trailer looks dope. So, I mean, Marvel really don't be messing up like that. So I think it's going to be good. But um, I wonder, like, if uh, people might be over it a little bit. Um, I, I get what you're saying with being over it. I'll tell you what, I didn't ne- necessarily go watch Captain Marvel until someone gave me a free ticket to go see it. Then I was thoroughly impressed with it. You know, I, I, I dug uh, the Wasp. So I like all the female characters in the movie. You know, I know a lot of people didn't like that in uh, Endgame, all the women coming together. But I got excited about that. You know, personally, I just like to, to see them all together. And it, it kind of, in my mind, led that it's going to lead to a whole new um, plot line, you know, with a girl. So I'm, I'm excited to see the movie, just not just with the action, but see how the storyline, uh, you know, runs and yeah. the fluidity of it. Yeah, I mean, I'm excited to see it too. Um, but I was just saying, like, as far as over it, as far as like Endgame's done and now they're moving on to the next phase, but this is a throwback character now, essentially, right? Like, she's gone. So, like, this is like a throwback movie. And they're trying to move on to the next thing, like so. It's almost like they're like the they're, re- yeah, they're revisiting, they revisiting things that they've already done in the sense. Um, I'm sure the movie's gonna be great. It looks awesome. The Taskmaster is such a, a sick villain in the comics. Like he's a he's a beast. So I'm looking forward to see what they do with him. Um, Ray, your thoughts? Um, yeah, what I what I believe, because um, I really haven't seen a lot of the trailers for this. I believe that they are actually really setting up to give us a new Black Widow. Um, I know that there's a young girl that uh, plays um, Black Widow's little sister in this, so I think that um, she's going to actually end up having a larger role in the MCU overall. Um, But overall, like I said, I'm very excited about this movie. Like, for me to stay away from a trailer, I'm super excited. And they just released a new trailer. I'm super, super excited. I can't wait. Yeah, and I was like looking down, I guess running down the other movies that are going to be coming out. Um, 
this small thing. I didn't really see nothing else. Like, I mean, as long as it's, it's, it's almost like by itself, especially now, because Milan was supposed to come out, but that's getting pushed back um, because everything going on with their coronavirus, um, that that might actually help the, the sales of Black Widow. Yeah, at least it might be, for sure. Yeah, and, I, and you know what? It just it just dawned on me, like you said, uh, because of the virus, it, things are moving back uh, because that's going to affect sales. That's people gathering in that public place. Right. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm anxious to see how that's going to affect, you know, the bottom line box office numbers. Yeah, and as we do this, I mean, right now, it's not pushed back. Right. But I, I'm sure if it's still crazy and people are still trying to be quarantined and stuff, they'll probably will push it back if mm-hmm. people can't, like, you know, um, go into public places. But, I'm, I mean, I'm sure everybody in the world is hoping that by May this thing is calmed down, right? Like, so, I mean, it's pushed back. That was the other thing, because, um, I, I mean, I kept looking. I'm like, man. Is Dragon Ball Super the next season going to come out, you know, anytime soon? Like, because there's rumors that it could be coming out um, in the spring or the fall this year. But you, now I know that's not going to happen. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? There's no way that that's going to happen now with the coronavirus going on. So that's <laughs> super disappointing. Like, like I mean, shoot, we might not get it until 2022 at this point. I mean, and speaking on that, Things coming out. I know I was looking forward to um, sneaker con. Um, I never heard of sneaker con until I watched uh, this Jeff Goldblum documentary, and, uh, and they had it in Cleveland. So I looked, and basically they well, it's not canceled. They pushed it back till June. But uh, speaking with uh, you know some of the artists out of Blank Canvas, they were interested in getting involved in it. of um doing artwork and for shoes and doing shoe paintings and hopefully to infiltrate that, um, you know, that market that we never thought of before, man. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. So there's a lot of closings and I mean, we could speak on that again later with uh, all the cons and, and those are being not just canceled, but just pushed back, postponed, you know, so um, things are going to be affected numbers wise, but Again, you know, that's public public gathering. Artists are still gonna be working it's on their own. So, you know, keep keep pushing that stuff out. Um I mean that's I mean but that's that but I'm glad you said that too, because I didn't even think like all these cons like coming up, are they all gonna be canceled? You know what I mean? So it's like I mean I know I'm supposed to have some tables at a couple cons. Mo- most of those aren't aren't till like the middle of the summer. Good, good. But um, yeah. but who knows? Like you know, it still might be crazy then, and now all that stuff might be canceled. So, um, that's something to think about too. I mean, just as just as a creator, if you got cons coming up, and you know, the crazy thing is too though, I always got hand sanitizer. I, every con I ever been to, I'm at that table man. I don't touch. If I touch somebody's head, I'm hand sanitizing right afterwards. Just that was before before this. But, I don't even think about but, that. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, that's something that, um, that's going to be interesting too. And then of course, how many like a lot of times in a lot of these cons, people come from out of the country. Mm-hmm. So um, it, it's uh, it's going to be interesting. It's going to be an interesting con season this year if there is one. Um, yeah. You know what I mean? If they're not canceled. I think a lot of them just gonna be postponed. <laughs> well, E three is officially canceled. Yeah. E three, yeah. E three got canceled. E three is done. See a lot of that's when was thing. that? The dates for that? Uh, uh, what was that? The weekend of June eleventh, like June eleventh through the thirteenth. So they canceled stuff all the way up to June. Right. Yeah. But see, E three is a little different because it's so big and it's it's like so many international people coming in. Like uh, okay. they already know they can't do that. Like, but, but like for like certain cons and stuff, like it's more locally, it's more locally. Like, I mean, there's definitely gonna be less people cause people do come from out of town for those things. But, um, it's, it's going to be, uh, like I said, it's going to be an interesting, 
interesting con season. Like I say, now that you said that, because they're canceling, you know, everything's getting canceled. Work's getting canceled. <laughs> People get canceled from work nowadays. So it's, uh, it's, it's, it's going to be an interesting time, but um, we'll see how all that plays out. I think, um, dang, what was like? What did I want to say? There's something else that was coming out too that I'm wondering if it's going to, oh, um, Attack on Titan season four. And I'm wondering, uh, if, I'm wondering if that's going to get pushed back now because that's supposed to come out in the fall. Um, and I don't know if, um, if they're going to make it or get that finished too. So that, I mean, this might just, if you're an anime person, this might just, <laughs> it might kill your year, man. This, this coronavirus is, is messing it up for everybody. But we've been the ninja scroll, the old ones from the nineties. Right. So, man, I don't even, I don't even know. Is there anything else coming up that y'all can think of? Um, that you wanted to see or anything coming up that might not be coming up anymore because <laughs> cause of that. Well, I know that uh, Bleach's anime, as I already mentioned a couple months ago, um, <clears throat> got put on uh, Burn the Witch. But um, I don't know. I'm just, I'm just watching and waiting and praying that we will have an anime season. Right. There's a lot of fellow anime fans I know y'all got a backlog of stuff. Just, just start that list. It's all right. Yeah, there's home and garden shows and things at the convention center that we were gonna. We had live uh, artists and painters coming to that have been canceled. So that kind of it, it sucks, but it, it doesn't suck. Where it's just not. It's not just limited to us. You know, it's across the board. So. Right. So hopefully something comes up. Um, like I said, the Home and Garden Show in Cleveland, not the Home and Garden Show, the Home and Remodeling Show. Um, and then uh, some Burning River, like, exhibition. So things that where we have live artists who are going to paint. And then, uh, you know, we have interactive painters. So the artists, like, let people just come by and draw something or paint something on their, their work to make them, you know, feel a part of it. So that. And of course, you can't do it now because we can't even handshake. I mean, when well, Madison and I saw each other today on the man, What's Up, man, it was, that, a, it was a death with an elbow. Even. It was like an yeah. elbow, man. <laughs> elbow. Like, we, that's the season we in. And, yeah. But I had a, uh, uh, one of my friends, man, back um, when we used to go to the gym, the one thing he always did, man, he never got nobody up in the gym. It was always a fist bump because he didn't trust, like, you oh, know, really? they, it was always a fist bump. Yeah. He did, so he was ahead of the game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he did, he, did, he did trade for this uh, for a while. Got with potatoes, canned foods, and working on his deck. Oh, yeah. Head man. nods. Fist bumps, head nods, peace sign, the little half gun. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing verbal. You don't want that, uh, <laughs> right. that, that pathogen coming out. Oh, that's funny. But yeah, that's uh, <laughs> that all I could think of, man. Like events and and things. Yeah, the the, the, the only the, the other thing that um it's out now, but I don't know if anybody want to see it is that movie Bloodshot with Vin Diesel. Diesel. No, man, I don't even want to see it. Like I haven't yeah. seen it. I know somebody that did see, that did see it, and they weren't overly impressed. But uh, that's one of them things. I might I'm gonna just wait. Cause I I don't even know I don't even know um, doesn't even look like it's gonna be any good. So he's reanimated. Yeah. No, I don't I don't think the blood shots going to do it very well. And I think they didn't even do like the comic justice too, just from what I was looking at. So um, so it was a comic. It's a comic, yeah, yeah. So you know everything is a comic now. Okay, that's where they, that's where everybody that's that thinks target. the money is. Yeah. So you yeah, know, every selling comics is just the comics right now. It seems <laughs> right, <laughs> right. But we could we got a whole another conversation about how that's not necessarily translate to comic book sales, but. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> That's that's a, that's a whole that's a whole another thing to talk about. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I mean that's basically I mean as far as that stuff, the only thing I can think of think that's coming up. Is there any movies y'all wish they would make coming up? Like like y'all wish that they had something coming out this year that's not coming up? Oh yeah. Oh, speak on it. Darkwing Duck the movie. Live action. <laughs> 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 terrible design. And then 
the fan outcry will make him redo, and he'll make $5 billion. <laughs> <laughs> What's your vision? Launch that, my boy. Launch that. What's your so vision of it? Like an animated or like real life? Like how, how, how do you – like like Howard the Duck type real life, that's what I mean. Like how that I'm talking – I'm talking live action with the humans in our world. Somehow, some way, Darkwing Duck left his town. It's not Duckburg, but it's the other one to come here. To Man, we can run through all the Halloween characters. I that's, just said Darkwing Duck without the beak for Halloween one. Year. Well, that's like they were uh, with uh, Disney when they did the Howard the Duck teaser. Uh, yeah, I remember that. For, uh, By the way, I, I'm totally just playing. I don't, I don't know if I really want to see a Dark Duck movie in real life. <laughs> hey man, you had me. I, I was you on board. <laughs> hey, you can do it. Make it a uh, nice. Movie. Think, what I, what I want is some more respect on 2D animation. Um, I would love to see like if they were to do a Dark Duck movie and like did it 2D and truly just treated it like a TV show. I think it would be fine. I don't know where um, the memo came that 2D animated movies don't sell, but they're wrong. You know, like even with the My Hero Academia movie that came out a little while ago, they made, um, I believe they made $10 million opening night. And that's, that's, yeah, that's not a movie that was, you know, meant for us here. So I'm hoping that like with more and more anime uh, movies that come to America, they realize, oh, there is a market for this. And maybe, you know, we can get like a proper Avatar movie or a Boondocks movie or, you know, like something like that. Where right. we all like going back to form. Because 2D animation sells. Anime is great. <laughs> right. right. But they, I feel like they don't feel like it's big enough, right? Like they feel, I think, I think the studios feel like if they do 2D, they might make some money but not as much as they could if they went, you know, digital, 3D, or live action. So, like, you know, they're always trying to think of what they can get the most money out of, not even, what? like, what, what can be profitable. Oh, I think it would be, especially, like, like he said, like he said, if they did it, if they did it, um, if they, if they came out with an Avatar 2D movie, man, I think that thing would kill in the theaters. Like, uh, yeah, I think that, I think something like that would, would just shut it down. But I like don't fact check, but I swear animated movies make more money because the parents, you know, I mean, especially like Avatar, you're you gonna capture like people who who grew up on that and the kids. So you know, and kids, I mean, Disney movies do well, but all animated movies generally do real well. Yeah, you know? but we're talking about specifically two D, like the drawings, like the yeah. Like, like yeah, like I don't, I mean, well, one, there's just not that many that have been out. Like that was when we were, that was like all dogs heaven, like you know what I mean? Like like we were Bible goes west, the land before time, like you know what I mean? Like that's what we had that stuff when we were coming up, and then like I Toy Story it. just shut the game down. Once Toy Story came out, then they were just like, oh, forget the two D, <laughs> like you know what I mean? Yeah. Like like it was a wrap after that. Toy Story, I think, ruined it. But um, yeah, but, I'm trying to think. Has there been any uh like 2D animated classics since Princess and the Frog? <laughs> not that the I, Simpsons. Not that I know of. But the bad thing is that there is one. We kind of disproving our point because we don't know what it is. <laughs> yeah. Simpsons. Weren't they like within the last? The two Simpsons years? movie. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was that was like ten years ago now. Was it? Okay. Yeah, that was like oh eight. I remember watching that on a plane ride to Singapore. Oh <laughs> man. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. International, man. <laughs> Singapore? <laughs> How much are we getting for this? But yeah, yeah, yeah. But my kids get down with those movies. Uh, I put on the old Teen Wolf. My daughter watched. Oh, man. The they should remake first... Teen Wolf. That's a remake I want to see. That cartoon, my daughter watched all, like, the whole first season. Like, they, they were generally into it. And I don't know if it's, like, the music that gets them. But the music is a huge part of animated movies. Right. You know, so if, I think if you get the music, get a good little soundtrack and score, you know, you, you, you possibly could do something. 
Yeah, I don't know, man. I, and they all been 3D. You got me thinking now. I'm saying, yeah, like everything that's come out has been 3D. Like there just hasn't been that to even disprove the point. Like the, the anime stuff, which I think is, like I said, a separate one, that never plays in a lot of theaters, right? Like, right. Right. Like whenever that comes out, it's coming out in select theaters and, and, and on a Wednesday, it's normal. Normal. it is niche. Like if I go, right. If I go to work and say, like, I just saw Dragon Ball Super Broly. No, only, only three out of twenty people gonna know what the hell I'm talking about. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? like, like it's not. But if you go say, you know, I went to see Toy Story three, everybody's gonna probably have seen it. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's like, it's. But at the same time, that's also an import. So like, I'd like to see what an American, because because I, because I, I, I'm almost certain like when the, when like Land Before Time and Five O Goes West and all those are those were killing at the box office. Oh, yeah. Back in the day, so I mean, maybe like I, I mean, maybe somebody will give it a shot. Maybe I I have to figure out how I can get an animated movie. But they out. still make uh, those Wallace and Gromit movies. Those don't do a killing. Those are three D. No, yeah, those are niche too, though, kind of right. Like like how how you know, market, really if like, you market. Yeah, like I, that's how I feel. I don't know, man. If I had money, I'll put it up. If I had a few hundred thousand or a million, I'll put it up and test it. I see. I think they passed like these big studios. The, it's, it, it would have to almost be like we had that indie top on the one thing. I feel right. like it almost would have to come from that indie, and it would have to get hot. And that's what these big studios do now. They know the. You know what I mean? Like what? What? Um. What did you say the last episode? What was the movie you saw? Onward. Yeah. So they already know people gonna go see that. Good or not, right? Whether they like it or not. Which it was not. Like it or not, because they got a good track record as digital. I think they feel like if they, let's say they made Onward 2D, they don't know. And because they don't know, they won't do it. So it would probably take like some indie studio to Mm -hmm. to make a dope 2D movie that smashes, and they're going to go, oh, we'll do that too. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. like, because that's how it is now. It's like they wait for somebody else. Like they, you know, the big companies are doing layups. Yeah. And they're, they're letting the smaller guys fail or, or succeed on more outlandish. Or they more, don't have the money for the yeah, market. Yeah, yeah. They're, they're letting smaller people kind of take the risk. And then when the risk pays off, they can just jump right in because they got the money. Yes. Right. So, so, so. It would almost take, but somebody should do that, man. I think you're right, Ray. I think if there's more 2D, man, I think, especially because there hasn't been a lot lately, I think yeah. people be looking for it. Start with Darkwing Duck, man. But that's yeah. Disney <laughs> <old, though. laughs> Darkwing Duck. Get my boy Uncle Darkwing Scrooge. Darkwing Duck 2023. <laughs> you can put everybody in there, though. You could, you could mash it up. Ooh. You can have Huey, Dewey, Louie, Baloo. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You know, you know, it's like the DuckTales cartoon that came out 2017, it did really well. Like, it yeah. ran for three seasons. Yeah, like, it it did really well. And Darkwing Duck showed up on there, too. So yeah. My kids love the gummy bears. I had to start buying gummy bears. Oh, for that wow. Life. I forgot about gummy bears. That but used to come on Disney. Did they drink that juice? The juice, yeah. The power yeah. To go- I think that song was cold, man. Like the beginning yeah, opening song was cold. here and there and everywhere. Yeah, that was a shit. Yeah, I remember that. So that. you get like a good tune with it. Well, I, <laughs> truthfully, that's why I think the universe is as popular as it is. They have some real bangers on there. Like I know that uh, Madison is on board the Steven Universe train and it's over now. I miss my stuff. <laughs> but um, <laughs> I'm telling you, man, they got some real bangers. Like, I got to listen. That's, that's what it's safe, man. But yeah, that's some uh, shit that man. We might have to get it. We might have to put something, uh, figure it out how we can make a two D movie or something going on, man. Yeah, bro, I've been working for over a year. I have like some of the first lyrics down and the chorus for a song to launch with uh, my book. But getting the music, the the beats, the melodies right is so hard. Especially because I don't know how to play a single instrument. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm that, that, that would be a talent. Tell, bro, I've been working with the drum kits. I've been working with the pianos, and I'm getting a sort of melody down. But I'm just like, but if people gonna like it, you know, man, that's what it takes. 
man. So I, I, I don't know, man. It, it's, it, I feel like it takes getting that right music with it. And if someone's musically inclined, you can start marketing through that. Like, oh, what's this right. from? What's this from? Right. Oh, this is uh, this new T- 2D movie that, you know, Unmasked, Cultured Unmasked did, man. You know? <laughs> yeah. But I don't know. But yeah, man, that's, uh, I'm going to go ahead and um, move on into the to the main topic. But that 2D, man, you, you got me thinking, Ray, man. Hey, I'm doing what I can. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm going to move on to the main topic. And uh, I think we wanted to talk about um, just uh, submissions for um, mostly uh, submissions for, for comics and things like that. And just going through the whole submission process, and um, like Ray, you think you're gonna submit any your your Twilight Angel to any publishers, or you just gonna go straight um, straight indie? Just go, just do it. Um, I'm gonna try both. Uh, I definitely want to go see how far I get on my own first. Um, but I do have enough faith in my story that uh, I believe it, it could get picked up and it could do really well. So here, I guess uh, I can just start with that. Here's the thing with that. People are always reluctant to pick up things that are already out. You know what I mean? Like, it's hard to get a re-release. Okay. Uh, you know, it's, it, 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 it's like publishers generally, like, even if it's hot, like, you know, like a lot of times now, like, people wait for you to get hot. Mm. And then they hop on, like, the big companies, because now they're just trying to get <laughs> And get a get a get a check, right. like whatever whatever Drake said in that newest release. How you get a manager after you got the win? You, he's like, yeah, you already get money. Like, why you got this new manager yeah. now? They just now they just taking money from you. Um, <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, yo, you got a new manager, but your old manager is the one that. But um, I think like a lot of people like that's that. I, not not that it can't happen. Um, but I think what what would happen. With that, like, let's say you, and this is for anybody who's gonna do like any publishing or put, if you put something out and, and it's and it blows up, one, you probably don't even want to mess with nobody else at that mm-hmm. point, right? Because now you're just splitting the pot, right? But two, a lot of times they, the, these companies, like, let's say you're not like you didn't blow up, but you're hot enough that like people know who you are, you know what I mean? And and getting published by a bigger publisher other than yourself would help you out. They're probably not going to want to publish you if you've already got things out, but what they will want to do is work with you on your next day. Mm. Like on your next project. Like if you've, oh, got a, okay. if you've got a new idea or maybe they have an idea, they want you to write on it. Okay. Right. So that that's more likely to happen if you put your stuff out before, um, before trying to submit it, before trying to get published, um, because a, a lot of people don't want to take on something that's already out that they ain't really have control over. They don't know how many different avenues people have to sell like your previous stuff. Don't get me wrong, if it's like super huge, like I said, if it's super huge, then anybody will want to hop on it. But then at that point, why would you just want to give them money? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, like so, so that's something to think about for people when they're when you're getting into that submission process. It's it's almost like you got to decide beforehand if you if you want it, like if you want to get published by somebody or if you don't. Because if you start putting it out on your own, there's a it's going to be a very slim chance that anybody will ever pick it up, no matter how good it is once you've already released it and people can already get it like like there's there's, there's exceptions so like so like and um, I'm going on because we'll probably have a whole other thing on Kickstarter and stuff like that mm-hmm. like there's exceptions but there aren't a lot of Kickstarter projects or things like that even that you're then going to see like picked up by Fanagraphics or picked up by Image or picked up by Alterna or picked up by um, Avatar, pick or any of these comic book companies, because with Kickstarter, it's almost basically like any more for comics. It's basically just like direct sales. That's basically what people use Kickstarter for now. Um, is you know they, they use it to get their comic made, but at the same time they're you know they're on the reward tier. They're giving the comic out, 
And our publisher doesn't want that, right? Because there's all these copies out in people's hands. They have no control over anything that's going on. It could be duplicated. It could be like, so how are they going? You know what I mean? Like they, they, they aren't, even if it's really popular, um, they really aren't going to want to do that. But there's always exceptions too, right? I mean, so, so you can, I wouldn't say take that with a grain of salt. I would say that if you do a Kickstarter or you go straight to publishing it yourself, I would say like you've got a 95% chance of not ever getting that comic picked up by a publisher. And like I said, if it does get hot and a publisher does want to come in um, and publish it, why would you want to mess with them? Right. You, you're already hot. Like it's too late. You know what I mean? Okay. So, so can we break down that process? Cause when you were thinking, when you said submissions, I was thinking of getting exposure, like, like Reader's Digest and, and, and places like that, you know what I'm saying, to get you exposure. Right. With, so that, I would say that would be more, and that'd be like something else we could talk about. That's more in the PR marketing. So, yeah. so what I'm talking about is you've got your comic book done and now you're ready to release it, but you want to work for Marvel. You want Marvel to release it. That'll never happen, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Marvel's not going to re- release your original comic. DC is not going to do it. Um, but you want to go to Image. So, like, Image is the big name for indie, mm-hmm. um, not indie publishers, creator own publishers. I think we talked about this. I said Image is an indie anymore, but creator own. So, you're going to submit to Image or something like that. Like, the first thing you want to do is read every submission. Uh, person's guidelines and every company has their you if they're accepting submissions um they they'll have their guidelines there but um the first step before you even submit anything is i would say that there's two things you want to work you just want to work on almost as hard as you work on your story with and that's a log line which is basically just uh one or two sentence description of your entire story so think of it like the bottom of the movie poster, like right. that tag. Right. So so you want to work that like to death, like make 20 of them, 20 different ways. Tell your friends about it. Read them off to your friends. Ask them which like ones they like. Who says it like this? Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. Like when they, yeah, when they do that with the deep voice and they're like the, a tale of triumph and struggle. You yeah. know what I mean? That's basically what, what your log line is going to be. Um, it's basically going to be one or two sentences and you're really trying to encompass basically your whole story in that, in that, in that one sentence. Right. And then there's your synopsis, not, not your, your, your synopsis, um, which is just a smaller port part, um, which is going to be like a paragraph. So you get a little more room to describe it a little better. Mm -hmm. So it's less of a hook and more kind of of a description. Like just think the back of any book, right? that part of it. Um, And really work those to death, man, because that's the first thing people are going to read really. um, If you're trying to submit a whole comic uh, to somebody, um, they're going to read all that stuff first to see if they're even interested in looking at the rest of it. Or looking at now, if you're an artist, it's a little different. And I'll say for artists, if you're just a comic book artist, um, it's one. It, it's a lot easier. Almost everybody is. A, a, a lot of places are some accepting art submissions. So if you just want to be an artist who works on a project, um, that's a little different. If you're just a writer, I mean, you're you're asked out. <laughs> <laughs> if you're just a writer, <laughs> if you're just a person, you're not even making comic books, but you write scripts for comic books, but you don't actually produce them, or you um, just want to be a writer in comic books, there's like, I'm sorry, it's like, if you know how to get into um, just a writing gig for, for a publisher, you can tell me. <laughs> just writing. Not just writing. Yet. You're not making the comic <laughs> You're just if you're just a writer and and um we talked about that a little bit on one of the previous podcasts and that's just because they can't accept your idea because they might already have that idea so they won't even take the submission they want to see complete work so if you're a writer your best thing is going to be to team up with an artist and actually start making the pages and, and make it the comic yourself now if you um if you're a writer and say you don't want that commitment to 
dial into making an entire comic book because of the cost and the time. And you, and you just, and you're like, don't want to any publish. You want to get published by a publisher. Then yeah, you can do like, um, work on like nine page stories or just work on the first nine pages and keep submitting that way. But that's a tough way to do it too. So it's possible like to get picked up that way and they say, Oh, we like this. Um, what else do you have? And then you could finish it up and you get it picked up, then you can finish it. But that's a tough way to go too. Um, Ray, like what were you thinking as far as what, what submissions that you, that you might do? Um, well, I got to look into it now because, uh, it sounds like my best bet is probably to go independent at this point. Um, and kind of, you know, like build my crowd, my audience from the ground up, which is already what I'm doing. So, yeah. So like, I mean, that's the thing too. Like, I mean, so like I said, you want to work like, I mean, for any, this is for anybody. One is, here's, here's the thing with working log lines and short synopsis is it's, it teaches you how to pitch your comic too. Right. So like the more you work that for your comic, when somebody asks you what your comic is about, you don't have to like stutter over it. Mm -hmm. You don't have to like do a recall. You can hit them with what you know sounds the best and works to gain their interest. Um, and you just work that over and over again. And then of course, like for most submissions, most people are going to want a detailed, then a detailed layout. So you should work that too, because you, it's tough when you're doing the detailed synopsis, which is basically your story from beginning to end is what they want. So you don't want to just give them the beats. You still almost have to kind of prose write it out when you're telling them, because you still want it to be an entertaining read um, for, for that detailed synopsis. But you also don't want it to be too long. So, like, usually they'll have, like, um, the guidelines of how long they want things to be. Some of them don't. But if they don't give you a guideline on how long you want it to be, I would say always just try to make a push to keep it as short as possible because um, they're going to be getting tons and tons of submissions in. Um, but, again, you want to take your time on that, too. Like, like you know, outside of before you submit anything, you should be working those the log lines and the synopsis and all of that to a point where, um, you know, put as much time into that as you do into your comic book because that's going to give you the best chance of um, getting to that next step where they really want to look at your artwork and they want to look at the pages you've done for your comic book. Um, so is it like, let me ask you real quick, is it, is it almost like you're putting a movie trailer into words? Yeah, basically. I mean, that's, that's a good way to put it. Like, yeah, yeah. Like basically you're trying to give them the trailer, but on paper, that's basically okay. what you're looking to do when they ask you for a synopsis. You don't want to just go beat by beat. That would be like if the trailer for black black widow was just like a, it, it just was like i'm a super spy or you know what i mean and i work at, i'm getting the old band back together and we're gonna go fight this dude he's bad he's tough the scooby-doo yeah yeah it's like okay i know what the movie's about but that wasn't entertaining right you want right. to give them the, you know they're giving you the, the funny lines and the the quick action scenes like what is you know what I mean? Like you probably get a, a splice, a splice of what they consider to be the best fight scene in the movie. Mm -hmm. You get, you know, a splice of what they consider to be one of the funniest lines in the movie right. and right. you get a gist of it. But the only difference between that and the trailer is the publisher wants to know the end. Like they want to know everything. So like mm -hmm. you can't keep, you don't want to hold, they don't want, they don't want you to hold any secrets. Like you can't leave them a cliffhanger on a synopsis or you can't leave things out. They want to oh, know, sure. okay. they want to know the whole way the story is going to develop. Um, because they want to know, like they, they I mean, they want to know if it's going to sell, like they don't want too many surprises because they're, they're not the reader. The, the editor that accepting submissions is he's not the reader of your comics. So you don't have to hide things from him. Right. They want to see they want to see beat by beat how your story is going to go um, because they don't want to have a lot of risk, right? If they're going to take you on. So you almost have like, when you go into the interview, they say you should, you should use the star method, situation, task, action, result. And basically, yeah. Yeah. That's basically that. Yeah. 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 yeah essentially. Um, so that's, that's one of the first things before you even think about submitting to anybody, 
just do that. Don't even look at who accepts, accepts submissions yet. Like work that log line, work that synopsis, um, you know, um, have people read over it, have people rate your log lines, have people rate um, your short synopsis. Don't have people rate your long synopsis. That's like a lot, but just have them edit it, you know, tell them, you know, treat it like almost like a short story. Have them edit it, work the pros and stuff and get that down packed before you get into submissions. And then usually once you once you get that done, you can get to the next point, which is usually they're going to ask me for sequential uh, six to eight pages. Most most publishers are going to ask for six. And it, whatever the amount of pages they ask for, don't send more or less than that because they'll probably throw your stuff out. Because like you, like you got to follow those. Harsh. You got to follow whatever guidelines they give you. Um, if they said six to eight pages, don't send nine pages, don't send five pages, send six to eight pages. If it says exactly seven, send exactly seven. And But the one thing that I think people get confused is most places, all they want to see is six to eight consecutive pages. It doesn't have to be your first eight pages. You mm-hmm. could start from the middle of the book. And work like, you know, you could find the best part, the best eight straight pages, and you can start from there as long as they can understand what's going on. Because all they want to see is that your artwork's good. You can tell a story through panels, which like they like, you know, your log line and they like the premise of your story. They're going to look at this. They want to see you can tell the story through panels, through sequential art. They want to see if your lettering's professional. Um, they want to see, you know, if you're if you're coloring your artwork and all that is professional. And, um, and then, you know, then they'll take it from there, but you definitely want to, want to follow those guidelines, but don't uh, fall into the, if it doesn't say the very first eight, six to eight pages, pick the best six to eight pages you have sequentially um, that you feel like is going to really grab them versus just sending those first uh, six to eight. If it doesn't say, that you need to do that. Have you, um, like you write in the comics, have you done any of this work or thought like process with all of this, uh, Ray? Um, so I haven't actually pitched my comic to anyone yet, <laughs> uh, just because it's not done yet. But, um, again, this is all stuff that I think is very vital for people to know. And this is when you want to, have the publishing company or the comic book company do the work for you opposed to, like you said, Ray's going to do it independent. Right. But someone might not have the time. They have the ideas and the artists. So this might be the best work for them. To yeah. see, you know what I'm saying? How... Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So like, and then, you know, and, and I, I would also say before you even submit, figure out what, your genre is of your comic, right? Because certain certain um, publishers only publish. You got to look. You got to find your genre and then find try to find the publisher that matches whatever your comic book is, right? So if it's like superheroes, um, if it's you know what they call it, capes and tights, like the old fashioned superhero, um, find a publisher that has those things as some of their top sellers and some of the things that they're really invested in. Um, don't send a superhero story to say like um, someone like Avatar Press, which does like kind of avant-garde, a lot of horror, things like that. Mm-hmm. You know, they're, they're right. probably not going to pick you up. And don't just submit your publish, your, your, your thing to anybody. Like I think a lot of people get to this point where they just want to get published and they don't care who. Mm-hmm. But it's not going to be any good to you if you get published by someone that's not that doesn't know how to market your genre, doesn't know how to market your book, so, and then it falls flat, and nothing happens. So, like you know, be be choosy too. Like you know what I mean. Like if you really believe in your work and you believe in your project, then um, then um, you should hold the value to say like, hey, I you know only certain people can do my book right. You know what I mean. Like you wouldn't just drop your child off to anybody's house. You know what right. I mean? You got to go to the people you know are going to, you know, even if you go know there, it might be, you might have um, um, uh, two brothers and you know, your one brother drinks and swears and you know, he'll take good care of your kid, but you don't want him in that environment. So you yeah. take him to your other brother who doesn't do that. Right. You know what I mean? That's kind of how you got to look at it. It's like, you know, both will do right by, by your child, 
mm-hmm. but there's one you don't want them to be exposed to that environment or something like that. Right. So you got to kind of look at that with your submission too and say like, do I really want, you know, you might, you might get submit your comic book to someone, they might publish it and then you find out, oh, they also do like triple X comics. So now your name's associated with that. Like, you know what I mean? Like you got to think about like, yeah. you got to really think you about the research. What, what they're publishing and how it fits with what you're trying to do. Or you might be fine with that. Like, you know what I mean? Like you got to kind of, take the time to, to vet that out. But once you do that, then you can go ahead and, and do your submission. And generally um, with submissions, as far as like expecting to hear back, you're probably only going to hear back from most publishers if they want you. Mm. Um, I would always encourage people to at least submit twice. So like twice a year to a publisher, like two times, not, not the same thing every year. But like submit it once, and if you don't hear anything for six months, submit it again, um, and 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 just just in case like something fell through the cracks or something right. like that. But after that, it's probably time to move on. I think some people just keep submitting things over and over. They keep chasing the the publisher down, um, and they just never hear anything. And they recognize the name once right, the envelope right. comes. Then they just, then they, yeah, then they're just over it um, at that point. But with that said, um, I'd also like to just drop some places that, at, as of this time now, are accepting submissions and just kind of um, some, I guess, information about them. Of course, there's like the big, I'll, I'll start with the big ones. Um, Marvel and DC are not accepting your submissions. Surprise. <laughs> so don't even try. Um <laughs> Don't even try. The best way to get into Marvel and DC is to network, which is probably the best way to get into anything. Any of them, yeah. <laughs> to be completely honest. I mean, you, that's any publisher. Any, if you want to get into Marvel and DC, the best, for, if you're an artist, it's a little easier. Um, you can have your portfolio, you can network, you can show people your art, and Marvel, Marvel and DC are always looking for, for pencil, pencilers, ink, inkers, colorists, and those type of things. But if you're trying to come with original stories and things like that, um, yeah, yeah, basically forget about it, but definitely network, but they're not accepting submissions. But then we can go to the other two, which is image and image is basically always accepting submissions. Um, but I think the reality with image is that at this point, they're, they, they found that, I mean, and it makes sense because if image was basically founded by people who got tired of working for Marvel and DC Comics. So you as just the guy submitting the image, you're, no matter how good your stuff is, it's probably not going to get picked up unless you've already got something else out there like we talked about before that's hot. Mm-hmm. So images, not to say I would still, like if you if you believe in your work and you think image is a good publisher for your thing, still submit but you're probably not going to hear back from them because they're mostly publishing already known names because that's where the money is. People that are bringing a fan base with them already. So you mm-hmm. see, they got tons of former people. They got tons of people who used to do work for Marvel and DC. Basically they've got tons of people who used to write movies uh, who had, who had success in the movie industry. Um, Things like that. It's the success in the uh, cartoon industry. Right. Um, those are the people that basically end up getting published by Image. One, because um, they have the network. And two, because they're bringing people with them already. So when they Image knows when they release their comic, they're going to get some traction versus grabbing that dude from Iowa who just submitted his thing. And it's really good. Um, but who is he? Right. You know what I mean? Who is he amongst? You want to put the work yeah. in to yeah. build. Exactly. Who is um, he amongst all these names we have and all these titles we have? He'll, he'll probably, you know, he'll probably be done by issue two. His things will stop selling. So still submit. Um, then there's Dark Horse. And Dark Horse is kind of the same boat. Cause Dark Horse is so much. They accept submissions as well. But they do so much licensing. So they're like the license, they're like the king of licensing for comics. And I love Dark Horse. I read a lot of the stuff they put out. I was going to say, I was getting a lot of, was it Batman? 
No, no, no. Batman, that's DC. <laughs> that's DC. No, but I thought they had some Dark Horse, like, connections. Well, so so here's the thing with Dark Horse. Like, Dark Horse does, like, they had uh, Batman versus Predator. So that's right. a mashup with DC and um, so the match. DC, DC and Dark Horse. So, like, Dark Horse does a lot of licensing. So they have, like, the Alien versus Predator series. Oh, and, that's what And I those see. type of things. Yeah. Um, and But they accept submissions, but I... I haven't even I haven't seen anything come out from like they do Hellboy Dark Horse is Hellboy, okay. Um, those, those, those things I haven't seen anybody new come out of Dark Horse even though they're almost always accepting submissions but I would say still go ahead and submit to them. But it I seems mean, like it's still like the the, the, the the capes type, right? So they do like a little superhero. They do some horror. They do and they, Dark Horse. They do a, like a, a a a large variety of things. Um, I I would encourage people to submit to them, but I, again, I wouldn't expect to hear from them. But again, we're talking about basically the DC, Marvel, Image, Dark Horse are basically the biggest names in comic book industry. So to get in with them is super hard either way. Like, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? But there's some smaller, there's, so, there's, there's some smaller places that are usually accepting. Um, I know people talk about Top Cow, but Top Cow, they're usually more at the higher artists than they are creators who are making their own thing. Um, so if you're an artist, you might have a good chance with Top Cow. Um, then there's Avatar Press, which I mentioned before. So they're a good one to submit to. If you've got some really good things, um, especially like if it's kind of in some cosmic horror-ish type of thing, um, they're, they're a good company to try to submit your things to. Um, then there's um, there's Alterna Comics. Again, they're kind of more like if you've got some type of children's children's books or like children's comics, kind of all ages, fun, quirky stuff. They that that's the kind of thing that they do. Um, they're a good one to submit to. They do horror as well. They they have a, they run the gamut, but they do a lot of horror. Um, if you have anything like that, kind of like a horror, kind of a mystery, like mystery series, something like that. They're, they're, they'd be a good one um, to submit your comics to as well. Uh, who else? Fanta Graphics. Um, Fanta Graphics actually does a lot of indie stuff too, and they run the gamut. Um, they run the gamut on things. Um, shout out to Ed Pisker of Hip Hop Family Tree, by the way. Uh, I might as well say that now because he's from Homestead, Pennsylvania. Um, he does. Yep. He does. Yeah, he does the Hip Hop Family Tree. Um, for for fans of graphics was like a huge seller for them, but if you've got say and and that's just basically like um, him talking about the history of hip hop through comics, uh, that's the type of stuff they do. So if you've got if you're doing a, like a comic like that, um, you can try to submit the fans of graphics. I don't know if they're still accepting submissions, but the last time I checked, they were. Uh, I'm trying to think of any other ones of note. Um, you could maybe try um, Antarctic Press. They used to do a lot of like anime and manga back in the day. Now, um, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what they're putting out. They haven't really put out anything that's very popular right now. So maybe if you're doing like manga and things like that, try to submit it to them. Who knows? Maybe they're looking for something that's going to kind of get them back. But those are like some of the most notable smaller ones um you can go to um and then i i would just make this suggestion if you go to jason thibault it's like jason t h i b a u l t dot com and he's got a definitive like he's got a huge list of almost all comic book publishers and kind of what they're accepting and he usually updates it um on a year to year basis but um, you can you can check that out as well. But um, I think for the most part, I've covered a good amount of submissions for today. Um, any uh, thing you guys want to add to that? Uh, no, I think I'm good. Hey, listen, you you ran down the, the <laughs> <laughs> you, you held that down, man. Um, and just learning about the, the submissions or hearing about it a little bit more in depth was cool um you know i'm trying to and again that's something we could talk about down the line submitting versus doing it yourself and i feel everything is just time committed what you're willing to put forth yeah and if y'all want to hear more about that um in any of the comment sections below on podbean or youtube or whatever just let us know um 
if y'all want to hear more about submissions, if y'all want to hear more about Kickstarter, something like that. Our own process. Um, right. The right. reason why we did something. Right. Right. Um, just let us know. Um, but with that, I mean, I guess we can go ahead and wrap it out. Any shout outs you want to give Newman? Um, I want to shout out, uh, this, uh, this artist, again, I know last time we talked about uh, Women's Appreciation Day, um, but her her name is uh, Phoenix. Uh, she she can be found at Instagram, um, Cloudy Fox Illustrations. She does a lot of freehand uh, artwork and digital. Um, she's putting out, like, comics and, and – um, and going down that process of trying to get started herself. But but um, her artwork is legit. Like I said, seeing her uh, firsthand, she came into the shop. And her husband, uh, Cam, he actually does video games, so he's putting together video games himself. Yep. Uh, his, his is uh, Cam uh, under slash Denton, D-E-N-T-O-N. So he's doing, like, digital um, video games. So, you know, their teamwork, their relationship is awesome. So I definitely wanted to give them a shout out. Hopefully they, you know, listen to some of the stuff that we're, we're saying and, and, and can get popping in. And, um, you know, I feel like their, their work can really be out there. They're, they're black artists, uh, female and, and male husband. So like they're doing stuff together, you know, it's not just yeah. support. So they're helping each other. So, yeah, definitely. Uh, Cam underscore Denton, and then um, Cloudy Fox Illustrations uh, with the S at the end, both on Instagram. Uh, look for them. Look for their work. All right, Ray. Um, I'm not even gonna lie. I don't have a second person that I can think about right now, man. That was really good. What you did, man. <laughs> it's all good hey if you think I'm going to give my shout out if you got anybody you want to shout out when I'm done um, go ahead and give, go ahead and go ahead go ahead and show them show them some love uh, but I'm going to shout out Ozzy Longoria he's the artist on Golden Tree publishing title uh, Eta and his his artwork is, is phenomenal it's dope and he's also usually open for commissions too so if you want to work with the artists that I work with um, you can look them up um, at Gemini Studios. Um, if you type in GeminiStudios.com, I believe you can find them there. Um, or you can reach out to Golden Street Publishing at gmail.com if you're looking for artists like that. Um, and I can put you in touch with them myself. Um, but, yeah, he's, he's, he's really talented. He does things the old school way. He doesn't do um, much on the digital. He sits down at the table and does the pencils and the inks and things like that. It takes him a while, but, man, it comes out great. Uh, anybody you think of, Ray? Actually, yeah. Um, <clears throat> Taco Universe, uh, he is a um, commissioned artist as well. Um, he does a lot of uh, – Celebrity artwork and things of that nature, um, but he does it really stylized and um, a mixture of like Western and uh, Eastern styles. Um, it's really, really phenomenal work. You can find him on IG at T A K O underscore universe. Cool. Um, and uh, again, you want to tell them where they can find you out of getting Newman before we get out of here? Uh, Chris Newman, 216. At Instagram, also, you know, you find me on some um, tags on Blank Canvas, CLE. Uh, I think that's it, uh, Instagram. Ray? Again, uh, my name is Ray My Youngblood. You can find my artwork on IG at Ray's underscore arts, R-A-I-V underscore A-R-T-S. And this is Madison Hawthorne again, Golden Tree Publishing, and um, you can find – me on uh, Instagram. You can find us on Instagram at Golden Tree Publishing or uh, Golden Tree Publishing on Facebook as well, but it's Golden Tree Publishing T or Golden Tree TV on YouTube. Um, you can catch the podcast on YouTube or you can also catch it on Podbean. And again, we should be up on Spotify, Apple, and Google Play shortly. But in the meantime, you can check us out there. Um, have a good day. <laughs>